Finally, so what we're going to do is look at an overview of non-rigid versus rigid transformations. So uh, one thing we could say, uh, or probably would be better said than rigid versus non-rigid, but pretty much when you're looking at rigid, um, rigid are going to be transformations that are not going to affect the, si or the size or the shape of, your, uh, uh, of whatever you're trying to translate. So, you know, an example is when you're, sh when you're just taking this, if I look at this book, let's say here's what I'm trans translating. Um, if I'm just gonna shift it left, for you guys, this would be your left, or if I'm shifting it right, down or up, this shape of this is still remaining the same. So all of our translations or our vertical shifts or in horizontal shifts, those are rigid movements because the shape of this doesn't change. Nor does it change if I go ahead and do a reflection or if I reflect it about the uh, x-axis. It doesn't matter if how I reflect it, the shape of what I'm looking at still does not change. However, I don't have the technology to come and do some non-rigid um, transformations, uh, but what those are going to be doing, those are actually going to be talking about shrinking and stretching them. So our last type of translation, if you remember, we were looking at um, T of X as your translation of X is going to equal F of C of F of X. And also we'll deal with translation of X equals F of C of X. So there's a couple things that we need to look at and it's when we're dealing with things. So again, ladies and gentlemen, we've talked about when these are positive or negative, how that deals with our reflections. We've also talked about, you know, when we're adding or subtracting these Cs, what that does to our shifts vertically, um, vertically and horizontally. One thing I just want to really make sure you guys understand is if you remember here, if we're looking at this, if we're thinking of our function as an ordered pair, we have our input and our output, you can always just kind of go back to an x and y coordinate. So whenever I do anything to my f of x, it's kind of like the same thing as me doing something to my y values. And anytime that I'm doing something inside of the function, it's like I'm actually affecting my x, I'm actually affecting my x values within the function. So using that kind of thinking, when I look at this, I say, all right, I'm multiplying my function by a c. And there's a couple things we need to look at. When c is greater than 1, I'm going to have what we call a vertical stretch. When C is um, greater than 0 but less than 1, I'm going to have a vertical shrink. And what you guys can think of, you know, if you just look at back at like the ordered pairs of this, um, you know, obviously I'm affecting, um, let's say my C was equal to two. Well now all my Y values are being multiplied by two. So you can see how that's going to stretch um, up your Y coordinates. And I'm actually gonna move this over here. So now if I'm dealing with T of X equals F of X, Cx. So now I'm affecting the x within my function. When I look over here, what I see is um, now I'm affecting the x value. So again, it's kind of similar to the um, very similar to my um, my my or my vertical stretch. But now actually we're going to be dealing with kind of the opposite again. So now when my c is greater than one, I'm going to have a horizontal. horizontal shrink and when zero when C is and when zero C is between zero and one I'm gonna have a horizontal stretch and again remember this is kind of a little bit different because this is opposite you guys thinking oh well this is Vertical stretch, you know, I'm doubling, but this is kind of like the opposite when it's inside of the function. And that was the same thing that happened with the horizontal translations or transformations uh, that we were talking about before. You know, it says plus three, you know, x plus three, excuse me, x plus three, everybody's thinking that's going forward to the right when actually it's actually moving the graph to the left. So uh, that's just a couple extra things I wanted to go over with you. Um, hopefully just remember rigid 
are translations or reflections. So they're all transformation, transformations that happen that don't affect the shape or the size of the graph or whatever you're translating. And non-rigid R would be stretching and shrinking, dilations, um, anything that's actually going to affect the shape of this. So that's uh, pretty much what I have for the overview of this chapter. It's a lot of things in the chapter, but once you guys kind of get this down pat, everything else pretty much falls into place. You know, it's finding, finding the equations, kind of stuff like that. So hopefully all this helps.